Hello, I'm Dr. George Rutherford. I'm a professor at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm here to talk about epidemiology, surveillance, and strategic information to give you some very high-level concepts and to try and define them for you. So uh, we're going to talk about key concepts. We're going to try and define populations, give some examples of various surveillance methods, talk about data sources for surveillance and strategic information, talk a little bit about uh, analysis, interpretation, and applications of surveillance and strategic information, and something, a few things around epidemic control and getting to zero. Epidemiology is the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states, what we typically call diseases, although they could be events as well, among specified populations and the application of that study to the control of health problems. So you can see here in a graph, um, we have, uh, we've plotted uh, four things at once, the total number of people living with HIV, that is the prevalence of HIV, new HIV infections, that is the incidence of HIV. The red here is the um, um, HIV-related deaths, and the uh, orange bars represent uh, people on ART. Obviously, as we go out into the future, this gets uh, better and better and better. Surveillance uh, tries to provide basic data for descriptive epidemiology. Now, by descriptive epidemiology, I mean looking at single variables. So the number of cases over time, the number of, of people with uh, a certain condition over time, you know, those kinds of things. How many cases were there in a certain city? Okay, so we typically include uh, uh, what we call descriptive or demographic data about the person, their age, their sex, um, their, uh, their descriptions like occupation, for instance, a, a place, which can be anywhere from a region to a country, to a subnational region, to a city, to a neighborhood, to a block. Uh, we also look at time, uh, which can be dates, hours, months, years, days. And then what exactly, is this a health event? or is it a disease? So for instance, pregnancy is not a disease. It's part of normal physiology. So births are a, are a health event and are not a disease. Diseases are things like HIV, uh, infection like SARS-CoV-2 infection, uh, like COVID. Um, and then the other thing to point out is that epidemics and their context differ from place to place. Right? So knowing who's infected how they became infected and where they where they became infected are crucial for us to target public health inter interventions. And then on top of that, once we start targeting them and once we start trying to intervene to prevent disease or to get people into treatment, we need to monitor uh, uh, what we're doing uh, to maximize its effectiveness, responsiveness and cost effectiveness. So surveillance is defined as the ongoing systematic collection analysis interpretation of health data for the following ends, to measure disease burden, to identify and control outbreaks, to measure the impact of interventions, as we talked about just a second ago, and to plan programs and allocate resources. We talk about uh, just the, the, the disease burden in terms of the magnitude, that is the number of cases, of the populations and characteristics of infected populations, um, infected persons, the geographic distribution, and then trends over time. This was just looking at, uh, for instance, the number of people living with HIV in various uh, cities uh, across the world. <clears throat> so strategic information is a higher level concept. Strategic information, um, uh, is the kinds of information that includes surveillance and monitoring and evaluation, uh, the kinds of information that's interpreted and used for planning and decision-making to improve the direction and focus of a program. So uh, here we can look at this uh, city-specific reported uh, data from the uh, uh, Global AIDS Response uh, Progress Report for uh, 2016. Um, here we have city and national level data and looking at PMTCT coverage, for instance, here in Nairobi versus the rest of, uh, versus Kenya as a whole. So SI addresses not just epidemiology, 
but also service access, coverage, quality, and acceptability. And so it's a concept that's kind of above the level of surveillance, as I said, and it can lead to deeper understanding of the context of the epidemic, the vulnerability of certain communities, the risk exposures, the options for actions to alleviate burden uh, or to mitigate uh, the impact of the disease. So SI should be systematically collected, consolidated, analyzed, and applied just like uh, surveillance, right? And the point is here is that we're trying to support evidence-based decision-making at all levels of the health system. You need to know what's going on in order to make good decisions to support the development and implementation of systems to produce valid, accurate, reliable, and timely information. You have to have a feeder system in order if you're gonna get good information. You have to work on the information system to provide valid, accurate, reliable, and timely information for use by relevant stakeholders, same point. Support the harmonization and standardization of information collection, management flow and use, and I don't need to tell you that your different funders have different expectations, different lists of things they wanna have done. And you could spend your whole life doing nothing else but filling out forms for your various funders, trying to get that stuff harmonized, trying to get it standardized, trying to get it down to a dull roar um, so that, that the collection management flow and use are much more efficient is a huge part of this. And the strengthen the transparency through dissemination of data information and knowledge in a timely manner. So information is power. We want to get it out to the people um, who are providing it. We want to get it out to the people who are using it. And we want to get it out to the people who are affected by it. So uh, in supporting programs through results-based planning and implementation, SI plays a role in understanding the epidemic and the extent of change resulting from intervention. So here's time one, here's time two what's happened over, over that period, tracking, engaging the health sector's response to an epidemic, the health system inputs, intervention coverage, quality of services, outcomes and impact, et cetera, by informing program improvement, uh, which includes assuring quality and maximal return on resources invested in helping to identify bottlenecks and, uh, and opportunities. Now, just a couple of words about populations. We throw these terms around a lot in HIV epidemiology. And um, it's, uh, they're often sit around, they're often undefined, but I wanted to kind of take this sort of chance to walk through this with you. So the general population refers to everybody. Uh, often with HIV, this is limited to people who are uh, uh, purportedly sexually active. So it's often limited to adolescents and adults 15 years uh, and older. A key population is a subset of the general population and there are often several key populations, plural. They're defined as groups who due to specific high-risk behaviors are at increased risk for HIV irrespective of the epidemic type or local context. They often have legal and social issues related to their behavior that increase their vulnerability to uh, HIV. So this is a um, uh, women married to men with HIV infection, right? That's only gonna happen in generalized epidemics. That's uh, largely happening in, um, in, in um, a certain group of countries and it's not really across the board. Um, it's, but it's this, it's this kind of group membership of vul in vulnerable groups that changes that dynamic. So what the key populations are that WHO considers are men who have sex with men, people who inject drugs, sex workers, transgendered individuals, and prisoners. Now, I just wanna show you this to try and sum all this stuff up. Um, we're looking here at, um, you know, we can move from here. What's the problem? That's the situational analysis and surveillance to try and understand this stuff, uh, inter what interventions can work, what are the contributing uh, factors. This is often based in research. This is uh, kind of things that are known or in guidelines, what interventions are needed. This, the, these things cost stuff. So you gotta do the input planning and stuff. Then we move into activities. What are we doing? Are we doing it right? That has a lot to do with QI and quality assessments. 
are we implementing the program as planned, right? And are the interventions working or making a difference? So these are kind of outputs here and then outcomes here. What are we seeing? Um, is it, uh, are we seeing changes in, in the, for instance, the number of cases, in the uh, incidence of HIV, in, um, in behaviors, whatever we're trying to target. And then finally, uh, we can uh, come up here to look at impact, which is asking the question, are collective efforts being implemented on a large enough scale to impact the epidemic, meaning in terms of coverage and an impact. And that's called outcomes and impacts uh, monitoring. All this stuff then feeds back. We, try, we identify new problems, things that aren't working quite right, and then we work them up through the system again. Now, PEPFAR is defined as its own definition of epi epidemic control, which is the number of new infections that, um, it's, it's the total number of new infections that when they that falls below the total number of deaths from all causes among people living with HIV, with both declining. So if you had, for instance, um, new infections going up um, and uh, and deaths going up, that's not epidemic control, even though the lines may cross. So they both need to be declining, and you want to have you know, fewer new infections than uh, deaths from all causes among people living with HIV. UNAIDS has its uh, own goals uh, that work, uh, that will complement PEPFARS. Um, they're attempting to achieve the 90-90-90 goal targets this year with fewer than 500,000 new HIV infections per year, fewer than 500,000 AIDS-related deaths and elimination of HIV-related discrimination. Notice here that this doesn't say all deaths among people living with HIV. It specifically says AIDS-related deaths. So this is different from PEPFAR. By a decade from now, the, goal, the vision is to eliminate HIV as a public health threat, to achieve the 95, 95, 95 targets, and to have fewer than 200,000 new infections uh, per year. Thanks, I'm gonna stop and uh, I'll come back to you on the, uh, on the next one. Thank you.